Hey guys, today I'm going to explain why I think Pharaoh's Beyond Death, the collector's booster packs, are not worth buying. Number one, it's very expensive. And number two, if you think about what you're actually buying, I know Magic Cards is cardboard, right? So obviously, if we just look at cardboard, we would not be getting a good deal. But in terms of foil, in terms of alternative artwork, foil alternative artwork, you have a scenario where I think the quality of these cards are actually not very good. Uh, the alternative artwork isn't like more artwork, which like if you hired a painter to help you, they would extend the artwork and it would be kind of new, a new version of it. It's actually just the old artwork inflated. So they did minimal amounts of work, which explains the product perfectly. Uh, the product could be really great. I um, mean, could be a great limited type of product sold at your local game stores only. But that's not what happens. It's sold every Target, every Walgreens, every Walmart. So I don't know the last time that a product, and again, there's not like a Walmart exclusive like they, you would have in Funko or other toys. It's the product of Walmart is the same exact product being sold at Target and Walgreens. I don't see how this product can be called a collector's case or a collector's pack when in fact it's everywhere. Now one good example of this is the hobby box for sports cards. If you play football, base, if you collect baseball, football, basketball cards, you will have a hobby box. And the hobby box is different from the retail box. So the hobby box is more expensive and you're guaranteed an autograph or a patch card. Kind of like this, but those hobby boxes are not, I mean, the difference in, it's not $300 for a hobby box, right? Magic the Gathering, uh, Paper Magic has gone down a very dark path and there is no return from this. Because I, fall, I collect sports cards too, and sports cards have done exactly what Magic is trying to do before. And now we have, what is it called? Upper Deck Transcendence. I think that's like a $60,000 booster box, if you will. And everyone's guaranteed the autos, and there might be different parallels. And you, you don't want to get to that stage because when you get to that stage, the regular cards become worthless. So if you're buying a 60K box of magic cards, or in this case, a transcendent, which I believe was baseball cards, but the upper deck has one with Tiger Woods and Michael Jordan and LeBron James because they're signed exclusively to upper deck. I forgot what that one called, like Masterpiece. I think it's called a Masterpiece, and that was 50K a box, you are A, devaluing every base card, which would be the regular cards that people are opening packs. So we pay the same amount of money for a pack of regular Magic cards, yet our, that pack is being devalued because there are four different versions of the rare that you just pulled, each of them being more valuable, the foil, the story time, uh, the I'm sure there'll be enchantment form and that's very confusing as a casual player like what the different prices the extended art the foil extended art the foil adventure time like how's a casual player supposed to understand I, I just cannot see this being good Having followed baseball and football cards and where we are today, where we have uh, Eminence, we have Eminence is, what is it, $10,000 a box and it comes in a suitcase. And there's all these like gimmicky stuff where in the future, not one person won't be able to afford it. We'll have to do like, we'll have to, um, what is it called? we all have to pitch in money so we and we get a randomly assigned name of a card and that card gets pulled we'll get that card mailed to us oh box break so we'll, instead of us being able to afford our own box break on a sixty thousand dollar magic product we would all 
maybe there would be 60 of us and we'd all chip in a thousand dollars to randomly see if we can win something from the box break. And that sounds pretty terrible. Uh, I have been in doing this in basketball. I collect basketball cards for some time, these box breaks. And I can tell you like this is not where you want to be. You don't want to be where the product is too expensive for any individual to buy it. And the only way people can open a product is if they team up and they all take a pay for a piece of it and then some random dude opens it for you. But that's where we are. And I think it is kind of sad, but it is also where, I mean, when, when you have too many different versions of a card, you're creating confusion in the marketplace. And the more confusing the marketplace becomes, the less people want to interact or speculate on, because instead of speculating on one card or it, two cards to foil, you have five or six cards you can speculate on and it's like the same card. <laughs> and it's like, okay. Um, when it comes down to just the math, uh, the simple math of it, you cannot trust Wizards of the Coast to protect investment or collectors anymore. The very example of this is by calling this collector's case, but being in literally every single Target and Walmart, you are destroying what the definition of collector is. Do you see a lot of collectors uh, for baseball cards at Walmart and Target? Do you see a lot of collectors at Walgreens? No, you don't, right? Um, but why are these products being sold there? So they went the reverse. So when you talk about football cards and basketball cards, they have a retail box for retail. And maybe you get an autograph, maybe you don't. But the hobby boxes are sold by these stores, the one or two stores that exist in your, uh, in your city. But Magic has done the exact opposite. They put the, quote, collector's box or the hobby box into Walmart. <laughs> It's pretty crazy. I've never seen anything like this. So I have, you know, I obviously collect a lot of things, anime figures, Legos, and I, I've never seen something like this where your collector's edition is being put in Walmart. Normally what happens is that collector's edition is um, in, you know, a premier store or some type. It's either on your website or it goes on eBay or you take it to conventions like San Diego Comic-Con and you sell it as a, a, a limited amount. I just haven't seen this where the collector's edition is being sold at the Walmart. Therefore defeating the purpose of being the collector's edition. So in, in terms of hobby versus non-hobby, hobby versus retail... The retail one is in a Walmart, and that's much cheaper than the hobby one. The hobby one you would normally order online from a sports store, or you could pick up the hobby one on their website. And it's more expensive, and you're guaranteed you know, certain cards. You're guaranteed a better type of card, if you will. Man, Paper Magic, I would not be vested into this right now. I... I'm not buying any collections. I'm turning away lots of really great collections. And to be quite frank, I would have killed for these collections to come in a few weeks ago. Or not a few, like three months ago. But now I, I'm not even going to click on the people's emails. Because I'm not even responding to emails. Because I'm afraid that they give me a price that's so low I, I want to buy it. But I'm buying it based on price memory. Every day I go on MTG Stocks. And every day it's uh, a bloodbath. Um... It's not good. I think the main problem is the collector's edition. There's too many of it. It's not actually that nice. The artwork is crap because they're basically just the artwork expanded, if you will. And But most importantly, who's playing Paper Magic now? So like you're, you're creating all these very expensive products. Who's buying this stuff? Not me. Definitely not me. I think this set is going to be one of the... Throne of the Elderin, because it was the first, is going to take a bloodbath. So it's going to go down so much in value 
after rotation, you will, it will be the worst set in terms of rotation. There will never be a set like it ever again. Where, let's say the card starts out $10 now, the, let's say the extended version. And I could see them going down to a dollar. It's same with Oko. Oko got banned in Standard and Pioneer. Yes, of course his price is going to go down. Any card that's banned, his price will go down. But what if I told you, hey, after Standard rotates, all these cards are going to go down the same way Oko went down when he was banned. Overall, I think it's bad. I, I just know it's bad because I've seen this in uh, basketball cards. I've seen this in Funko where you just you have a premium product, but no one takes it seriously anymore. But it's still, it's still charging a premium price. And the reason people don't take it seriously anymore is go to Walmart. When is the last time you saw like a very strong brand sell their best product at Walmart? Like, are there Tiffany's jewelry? Are they, are they selling Tiffany's there? Are they selling? I mean, Walmart in general is meant for like cheaper products, right? But if your collector's product is being sold in the cheapest place to sell things on earth, what does that say about your brand? Bye, guys.